Hello everyone, welcome to the new lecture on design of piston. In this lecture, we will cover the main parts of a piston, function of a piston, diagram of the piston, that is cross section of the piston and the design procedure of the piston. To start with, there is this diagram of a piston, a cut section or a cross section of a piston, which has the following parts. A capital D which shows the cylinder bore or the inner diameter of a cylinder which is followed by th that is the thickness of the head or crown followed by the ring section which comprises of the grooves which I have shown at a, as a zoom version as t1, t2, b2 these are the thicknesses wherein t1 is the radial thickness, t2 is the axial thickness and b2 is the land section wherein the rings will be resting. There are ribs provided and the center of the piston. The conditions of applying the ribs will be discussed further. The ring section has all the grooves which are comprises of the oil scrapper rings which are at the bottom and the compression rings which are at the top. The skirt part of the piston holds the piston pin which is locked on the two sides with the help of circlip. Piston pin has the outer diameter of D0 and this length L1 shows the length of the small end of connecting rod which will be fixed in this portion and the bushing part of it. T4 is the piston wall thickness. The portion which is at the top that is TH as already discussed the thickness of the head and the remaining part is called as the piston barrel. The main parts of a piston are head or crown, piston rings, compression rings and oil scraper rings, skirt and piston pin which is also called as gudgeon pin or wrist pin. Further, the function of a piston can be written as it is a device or a component which receives the impulse from the expanding gases and transmit energy to the crankshaft through a connecting rod. Now we will discuss the design procedure of a piston. I have done that in a stepwise manner. First things first, step 1 will be dealing with design of head or crown. It is denoted by TH and the unit is mm. To design or to find the head thickness of head or crown, it is based on two criterions. First is strength and second is thermal considerations. Based on strength, when we talk about based on strength, most important thing is sigma t which is the bending or the tensile stress acting on the component. The formula is th equals to under root of 3 p d square 16 sigma t. This is a empirical formula wherein small p is the maximum gas pressure capital D is the bore diameter and sigma t is the tensile stress which varies with respect to the material in use. If it is a grey cast iron, the sigma t value will be in the range of 35 to 40. For the case of nickel cast iron, it will be in the range of 50 to 90 megapascal and for forged steel, it will be from 60 to 100. Talking about the thermal consideration, TH formula has now changed to capital H divided by 12.56 K T C minus T E wherein H is the heat flowing through the piston, K is the heat conductivity which has two values again based on the material of the piston. First is cast iron wherein it, the value will be 46.6 watts per meter degree Celsius and for steel it will be 51.25. The next term is T C minus T E. T C is the temperature at the center and Te is the temperature at the edges. The difference between them for the case of cast iron will be around 220 degree Celsius. Now there is a term H which is missing and which means heat flowing through the piston. H is shown by C into HCV into brake power into M wherein C is a constant and its value is 0.05 HCV is higher calorific value which is dependent on the type of fuel used. If it is a petrol fuel 
the HCV will be 47 into 10 raised to 6 kilojoules per kg and for the case of diesel it will be 45 into 10 raised to 6 kilojoule per kg. Brake power is in kilowatts. There are two important notes which has to be taken into consideration. Always take the larger of the two values to finalize the value of TH that is based on strength and based on thermal consideration finalize the value which is having the larger data. Second note is when TH is less than equal to 6 mm no ribs are required and when TH is greater than 6 mm ribs will be required to strengthen the piston head. Ribs has certain thickness which is represented by TR that is thickness of ribs and can be calculated from TH wherein TR is in the range of TH by 3 to TH by 2. Step number 2 deals with the piston rings. Piston rings as we have discussed earlier piston rings have two thicknesses first is T1 that is radial thickness and the second which is the axial thickness represented by T2. We can see it from this diagram that T1 is this thickness and T2 is this thickness. Carrying forward T1 can be found from the empirical relationship which is similar to the thickness of head relationship and is written as D times under root of 3 Pw sigma T. Mind well Pw is the pressure of gas on the cylinder wall its unit is Newton per mm square and it is in this range 0 0.025 to 0 0.042 Newton per mm square. Sigma T is the most important part here. As we are talking about piston and piston rings, these are made of two different materials. Sigma T for piston material has a lesser value whereas Sigma T for piston rings has a higher value. We can see that it is in the range of 85 to 110 megapascal for cast iron rings. This signifies that piston rings, the material used in piston rings is of higher strength. Second part that is B part in it is to find out the axial thickness T2. It has a parametric relationship with T1 as well as empirical relationship which deals with the number of rings. In the parametric relationship T2 is in the range of 0.7 T1 to T1 which can be further stated as it is either less than T1 to 30% or equivalent to T1. In the empirical relationship T2 has D divided by 10 times NR where NR is nothing but the number of rings. From the diagram which we have discussed it has slots 1, 2, 3 and 4 slots which, mean it, which means it can accommodate 1, 2, 3 and 4 number of rings. Top 3 can be the compression rings and the last one can be the oil scraper rings. So in all this type of piston will have number of rings which is a combination of compression rings and oil scraper rings. Next step deals with the width of top land. We all know top land is the top part of the piston which is in a parametric relationship with TH. TH is the same thickness which we have discussed in the step number 1 and B1 ranges from TH to 1.2 times TH. The next part is dealing with width of other lands. Other lands meaning the piston rings will be resting on these and top land which means the explosion will be taking place above the top land. So other lands has a relationship with the term T2 which is discussed in the step 2 part B. Among these two values we have to take the larger value and then put it in this equation to find out the value of B2. Moving forward there will be piston rings which will be free before free that means before being placed in the cylinder. So there will be two kinds of gap first gap will be denoted by G1 when free ends of the ring are shown it is in relationship with the thickness T1 that is the radial thickness. So G1 is 3.5 times T1 2 4 times of T1 the second gap when the ring is in the cylinder that means now it has a relationship with the term capital D or the inside diameter of the cylinder. Next step deals with 
the piston barrel design. Piston barrel as we have seen is the lower part below the TH that is thickness of the head or crown. It has a maximum thickness and denoted by T3 and is in relationship with two terms. First is the capital D that is bore diameter and small b which is the radial depth of the piston drain groove which is taken as 0.4 mm which means if I add T1 that is the thickness which is already discussed in step 2 2.4 which is increased by 0.4 so I can also write the same relation of T3 as T3 equals to 0.03 d plus T1 plus 4.9 <coughs> we can see that 4.5 plus 0.4 gives us 4.9 moving forward next is to find t4 which is piston wall thickness and t4 has a relationship with t3 which can be formed from this formula last step amongst the parts which we discussed is to find out the piston skirt length and then we can find out about the piston pin piston skirt is the last part the last part in sense of first we have top length then followed by the ring section and then followed by the skirt section so we are talking about the skirt length in skirt length we know that there is a maximum gas load on piston represented by capital P which has a relationship in terms of pressure into area pressure denoted by small p and cross section area of a cylinder which is a circle as pi by 4 d square and also the maximum side thrust maximum side thrust or the side thrust is that part wherein the piston hits the cylinder wall and it is denoted by the term capital R capital R is denoted by this type of formula wherein it is P divided by 10 that is if I write R it can be written as the same formula but multiplied by 0.1 and also R equals to PB into D into L which is again related to pressure into area so there are two formulas from which 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 can give me the value of side thrust or R now the terms D into L is the projected area of the piston skirt PB is the bearing pressure which ranges from 0 0.25 to 0.5 and if I add if I find out the value of R and substitute in this formula I can get the value of small l then this value of small l can be added here as length of skirt then which will be added with the length of ring section and that added with the top length will give the total length of the piston among the fifth step is dealing with piston pin the same formula applies here but it is with a change that is load on the pin due to bearing pressure which is again as discussed earlier is bearing pressure into bearing area bearing pressure here just for differentiating with the PB it is denoted as PB1 D0 is the outer diameter of the piston pin and L1 is the length which we are interested in from the diagram you can see these are the D0 values and this is the length L1 we are focused on this D0 and L1 finding the area as D0 into L1 multiplying with pressure we can get the value of load on pin due to the bearing pressure also this is known to us why we are using this formula every time because piston as a whole is subjected to the gas pressure so all the components when they are designed for their dimensional purposes will be subjected to the grass pressure and that will be used as the criteria to design the components this two equations that is PB1 into D0 into L1 will be equated with pi by 4 D square into P equate both the equations to find the value of D0 D0 once found can also give me the value of DI which is a relation of 0.6 times of DO so we can get the inside diameter outside diameter and the length of pin in the bush of small end of connecting rod the last step is to check for the bending sorry last step is to check for the bending strength maximum bending moment at center of pin capital M can be written as 
p into d by 8. This is the same relationship which we have already obtained in the subjects of MOS. Sigma b for a hollow cylinder will be in the form of pi by 32 d0 raised to 4 minus di raised to 4 divided by d0. We can calculate the value of sigma b and compare it with the given value of sigma b in the numerical. This concludes the design procedure for a piston. Thank you.